Hello there. Hi, everybody. How are you? Welcome to the 3 a.m. Knitter podcast. Oh, I'm happy to be back with you today. Let's see. It is Sunday, September the 3rd. And um, welcome. Welcome. So if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome. And thank you for coming to check out the podcast. If you are a returning viewer, thank you too. Um, happy to see you again. So let's get some housekeeping out of the way. My name is Anne, I am the 3AM Knitter, and I am coming to you today and always from the North Shore of Nova Scotia, Canada, a small town called Picto. Um, beautiful, beautiful day out today. Uh, it is, according to my watch, 19 degrees Celsius, which uh, is the perfect temperature for me. Um, just right for putting the knits back on. The last couple episodes, um, it was just a billion degrees outside and so I wasn't actually able to wear anything knit because it was just so hot. But we're getting into fall now. I don't know about you, but do you ever notice that the seasons now just, boom, they change. There's no kind of general or gentle ease into the season. It's like you go to bed, you know, one night and it's, <clears throat> excuse me, a billion degrees and it's summer and you wake up the next morning and it's five degrees outside and it's fall. I don't know how that happens, but anyway, that's what it seems like to me. So you can find me uh, on Instagram as the 3am knitter. My email address should you wish to email me is 3am knitter at gmail.com and uh, my snail mail address is down below in the show notes uh, if you need to um, reach me that way. Uh, let's see what else can I tell you that there's a Ravelry group 3am knitter that um, truth be told I, I, I have neglected a little bit lately but I have made it my mission um, to keep that group up to date with uh, all the goings on of the 3am knitter. So uh, if you're on Ravelry, um, go ahead and join the group. Um, and let's see, uh, the September newsletter went out on the 1st. If you have not subscribed to the newsletter, this is just something I send out each month on the first day of the month. Um, short and sweet, it just gives you kind of a podcast schedule, virtual knit night schedule. Um, and upcoming test net information and th things like that. So um, I will not be inundating your inbox with lots of emails. Um, I'm going to try my very best just to keep it to one email per month. Uh, and if you're interested in that, there will be a link below as well for you to sign up for the newsletter. Okay. Um, all right, speaking of virtual knit night, September's virtual knit night is September the 13th at 7.30 p.m. Atlantic time. Um, now, the only other time zone I know is Eastern Standard Time. So that would be 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. So the 13th is a Wednesday. Um, we meet on Google Meets and there uh, is a link in the newsletter. So if you got the newsletter, you can just click on the link and it will take you directly to the Google Meets room. Um, if you have not signed up for the newsletter yet, but do want to come to the virtual knit night, um, send me an email and I will send you the link, okay? So this is just something new that I'm doing. There's really no, um, no structure uh, or no schedule to follow. We just jump into uh, the meeting room and knit together, share, you know, share our stories, share our projects, and make make some new friends in the knitting world. So I hope that you will join join me there on Wednesday the thirteenth. Okay, I think that's it for housekeeping. Yeah, if something else comes up, I will. Uh, I'll let you know later on. So. I got lots to share, um, lots to share with you today. First of all, what am I wearing? So this, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a little bit of a tickle in my throat. So this is, just get a little closer so you can see the, uh, the detail here. This is the Eyelet Pop Top. Let me see if I can swing you around so you can 
see this a little better. So I made this um, earlier this year as a layering piece um, because I like to be able to, um, you know, I get pretty hot every once in a while. So you can see that I'm just wearing it with a spaghetti strap top today um, for, for the summer, but as it gets cooler, you know, I wear it with a long sleeve top underneath. This is a pattern that was designed by um, Andrea Rammel, who is half of the, sorry, I'm just trying to find the, there it is, um, half of the, half of my LYS, a natural you, natural you yarns here in Picto, Nova Scotia. This is her design. Um, it is on Ravelry, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, I think I've showed this to you before. This is the lovely Andrea who designed the pattern and you can see it's a short sleeve and it's got the little detailed yoke. And then it's not cropped, but it, it's not super long either, but you could very easily, um, you know, lengthen the body. So Andrea, um, it is a paid for pattern. It's $5.75 Canadian. Um, let's see, you can buy it on Ravelry or you can buy it on the Natural You Yarns um, website. I'll link that below, of course. So it's got six sizes from small to 3X, uh, finished bust measurement 40 inches to 54 inches. Um, it's intended to be worn with five to 10 inches of positive ease, um, and it's knit in DK weight. So I, bear with me just one sec, I knit this in uh, Patton's North America Classic Wool DK Superwash. Um, this is the Claret or Claret, depending on how you pronounce, colorway or number 12532. Um, I used a thousand fifty nine thousand sixty yards, nine hundred and sixty nine meters, four hundred and twenty five grams. Not sure I calculated that correctly, but anyway, knit on four point five millimeter needles or size seven US, um, and the gauge is eighteen stitches and twenty three uh, rows to ten centimeters or four inches. Um, this size is the 2x size um, i like my tops big i like a lot of ease i find that far more comfortable um took me about let's see i did put it down for a while let's see i started it december 2022 finished it february 20th um i did put it down because I wasn't really pleased with the yarn as I was knitting it. It felt, what did, what were my notes here? I have the yoke almost completed at this point of me moving onto the body. So far, I'm not wildly pleased with the yarn. The color is great, but it feels rough. Um, fingers crossed that it will soften up after a, a bath and block. So it did, it did soften up, but it's not the softest yarn ever. So as a layering piece, it's perfect. Um, I, I'm not wildly pleased with the way it feels on my skin. So it is, it is good for a layering piece. Uh, so I, I wash this and you know, lay it flat to dry, um, which is my preference. But the pattern itself is great. Uh, easy, easy to follow. You know, really, once you get the yoke done, um, it's just knitting, right? It's all done in the round, so it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, seeing if she has any more notes. No. So I'll, I'll link to this pattern uh, in the show notes. There we go, below. Um, and you can you can take a look. Sorry, I'm just reading the notes on somebody else's here. Loving the pattern. She was using onion knit organic cotton. Um, she didn't like that yarn either. So, you know, I guess that's kind of the trick, isn't it? To, to find the yarn that you like. But um, I will knit this again. 
Um, I've got lots and lots of stash yarn um, that I can make work because this has got so much ease in it. You know, I think that if you didn't use DK, you could make it, you could make this work. If you really want to do it in fakering, you probably could. Um, I've got some lace weight that I could pair with something over there. So there's lots of, lots of options. Anyway, so that's the uh, eyelet pop top. That's what I'm wearing today. Yeah. All right, works in progress. So one of my very, very, very dear friends, my BFF, Patty, um, her stepdaughter is having a baby. And so I am, of course, knitting up a baby blanket. Actually, excuse me, I'm crocheting a baby blanket. Um, I had, look at this mess. Uh, I had this gigantic ball of Red Heart Soft uh, in this off-white color. Uh, let's see, it's medium weight. These balls have, it's 10 ounces, uh, 471 meters or 513 yards. Um, and I am using a five millimeter hook. So uh, I've just, I've just started it. Sometimes I forget how much I like crochet. What about you guys? Do you crochet? Um, so I've just started it. I'm just pulling this yarn a little bit. So put this down. So this is what I'm calling uh, you're a star baby blanket. So you can see it's just going to have stars. So I've just, just started the second um, row of stars. And I think the pattern calls for, do, 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 yeah, $10 star, oh no, of course I, didn't I bring it up? No. Anyway, um, the, no, I don't have it here. That's okay. Um, the pattern, I don't know that I have enough of this off white. I'm not going out to buy yarn. It's a, it's a baby blanket, right? And I have so much yarn over there. So because I don't know if they're having a boy or a girl and they don't know if they're having a boy or a girl, the only other yarn that I have that, you know what, I think is gonna work. I've got a beautiful, it's, and it's the same um, Red Heart soft is in a beautiful teal blue yeah i think that'll work so um you know i mean who cares right if it's a boy or a girl teal's beautiful um, and i'm gonna maybe do just one um one of the star repeats like one of the star rows uh out of the teal and then when i when I bind it off, I'll come back to the off-white. So, sorry, that was kind of a long way around to say, I've done one, I'm doing this one, I think the next one I'll do in the teal, and then the fourth one I'll come back to the off-white uh, to finish it off, because I don't think I'm gonna have enough, and I really don't wanna go buy, uh, buy any more of this stuff. So this is, you know, it's acrylic, you need that for a baby, right? So that they can just throw it in the wash and not have to worry about it. So that's that's being knit, uh, knit up, listen to me. I'm crocheting that up. Uh, that's my TV work right now. And I think that I should have that have this done and ready to mail to Ontario. I don't know, maybe by the next podcast. Depends on uh, how much TV watching time uh, I get. I get in. So the other thing that I'm working on is um, the design for my Sunspot socks pattern, which is a collaboration I'm doing uh, with Botanical Fibers, a, an amazing Nova Scotia hand dyer. I will link her web page down in the show notes and her Instagram as well. So this is the happy yellow that's really washed out. Hang on. No, that's better. 
This is the happy yellow colorway. I wish that you guys could feel this. It is incredibly soft. Um, so these are the sunspot socks. <sighs> yeah, these are the sunspot socks. Um, I've got the preliminary pattern written out. Uh, I'm just casting them on so I can knit them up. And then um, once I've made whatever corrections I think need to be done to the pattern, that will be going out to test knitters. Um, I'm a little bit behind. Um, I had some, I had some um, tech difficulty. Mm. Excuse me, as so I get a drink of water. I had some technical difficulties with my laptop. And then I also, I don't know what happened in my math for um, for my other test knit, but there was something wrong in the math and I had to, I basically, I couldn't figure out where I went wrong in the sock writing pattern. So I had to go back and just start writing it out fresh. Uh, so that's been delayed getting out to test knitters. Um, that's my collaboration with Windswept Fibers, um, the, the Mama Earth collection. Um, so I'm hoping, hoping that I've got everything organized and I can get that out this week to the test knitters. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm running behind on that. And I just, you know, it, you know when you're knitting something and you make a mistake and you you can't figure out how to fix it and you just put your project in timeout. That's what I did with the pattern. I had to put it in timeout because I just couldn't figure out how to fix what, I don't think I made the mistake, like I don't think I made the mistake writing it out. I think I did the math all wrong. So I had to go back and fix it all. But anyway, so that's uh, that's being worked on. And then my, my Noctuidae sweater. So now that I have finished my commission knit, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, I came back to my Noctuidae sweater because I'm really, we're already in September. I would really like to have this done this year. So I picked it up again, and you might recall from a few episodes ago, I talked about how I was really displeased with uh, my color work and that I didn't like the tension and I was contemplating ripping it out. So for those of you who, um, who don't know, uh, let me find a good picture here. Do I have it up on my iPad? Uh, no, I don't. So this, sorry about the rustling of all the papers. This is the knock to a day sweater. You see that beautiful moths, color work on the arms, right? Um, this is a pattern Uh, by Katherine Clark. Isn't that something else? Um, she's on Ravelry as Brooklyn General Store. You can follow her on Instagram, Love is in the Making and Brooklyn General Store. Um, please share your finished objects on Instagram. So this is a, um, there's a, let me see, it is a page for pattern. So I, I don't want to show you too much. Look at that, eh? So <clears throat> I was not happy with the color work. I had gotten to, um, I don't know how many rows in the first chart of the yoke. I don't know, a few. Uh, and I was contemplating ripping it out because, because this is such a, a big project and it is, such a beautiful project, kind of an opus knit for me. Um, I want it to be right. And I, I don't want to spend all this time doing all this color work to never wear the sweater, right? So I did, I, I pulled it back. I actually, I knit three or four more rounds and then I went stop and I ripped it all out. And I didn't just take it back, I ripped it out and I cast on again. So 
I have the neck ribbing complete. Finished this yesterday, so you can see it's three by one, and there is a contrast color um, in the pearl. Isn't that something? I, I love it, I love it. So I'm feeling better about my color work. I'm feeling better about my tension. I'm just now starting uh, to set up for the short rows for the, for the back and uh, I will continue on. So I am using um, my uh, LYS yarn for this. I'm sorry, I am looking for a, darn it. I'm using my LYS yarn. Of course, I don't have a darned. Uh, let me just get to, whoops, natural view. Oh, you should see what's coming up as I'm typing this. My Lord. There we go. Natural you. This is a fingering weight sweater. So, uh, I don't know what I was thinking, but it is what it is. Um, it's going to be gorgeous. I am using their Gots to Have It um, fingering weight. Here it is here. And I am doing it in, it's not on here anymore. I must have, uh, and anyway, sorry. About this yarn. So it is, <clears throat> excuse me. Ba -da 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 -da. Gots to have it Merino, um, got certified uh, and EXP. So what that means is uh, God says a guarantee to M emphasize the environment and sustainability in all stages of the manufacturing process. Requirements include the handling of wastewater, uh, energy usage, along with social ethics and worker-related aspects of the manufacturing process. The final yarn's quality is also inspected. The Scholar, I don't know if I said that right, EXP 4.0 is Chlorine-free machine washable treatment. EXP is the first wool finishing process in the world to meet the strict criteria of the blue design and global organic textiles or GOTS standards. Um, so, you know, I love everything about that. Um, so I am knitting it up. My main color is this kind of earthy, it's like a gray, I don't know if you can get that. It's like a gray beige. Um, because it's hand dyed, there are um, slight variations, of course. So that's the main color. Uh, I'm also incorporating as one of the contrast colors, this gold color. Hang on, that's better. That's close, it's not exact, but it's close. And then for my color work, um, I was going to use some of the minis, um, but I have decided to, uh, to go with my absolute favorite colorway of all time, which is Malabrigo Archangel uh, in their sock weight. So um, many people use spin cycle for this, which makes sense to me, and I'll talk more about spin cycle in a minute. But um, yeah, so, you know, I've made all my notes on the pattern, I've highlighted, you can see I've got stuff crossed out and I've got, you know, highlights and check marks and things like that. So I'm back at it. Um, and I am endeavoring to get this done by the end of the year. <sighs> Wish me luck. Wish me luck. So that is uh, what I'm working on. All right. So I wanted to share with you today, excuse me while I get another drink of water. This mug, this is my one and only uh, Denise Lynch mug. 
So Denise is a beautiful potter from here in Nova Scotia and uh, I had the delight to meet her at one of our knit nights. <clears throat> Actually at many of our knit nights. Um, she is an amazing maker. I mean, just look at this. It's got a little place for your thumb here. Oh, so good. This is my special teacup. I'm having water in it today, though. Mm. I will link to her website down below so you can check out her beautiful work. So today I wanted to share with you my fall knitting inspiration. These are projects that I have gathered up that I need to decide what I want to knit this fall. Aside from my Noctuidae, um, there are many of them. And I would love for you guys to weigh in. Now, a lot of these I do have the yarn for in stash or I can make something work. So that's the good thing. That's kind of what I, that was one of the criteria that I set for myself while I was, you know, scrolling through Ravelry and watching, you know, people's Instagram and, and things like that. Um, and the first project that I want to make uh, is, <clears throat> bear with me just one sec here. I got to plug in because I just got a low battery warning. Sorry. Uh, let me just get my... All right, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, Alpine Bloom Tea. Now, you've heard me talk about it before. Um, I was asked to knit the Alpine Bloom Tea by the lovely Jody of the Grocery Girls. And she sent me the yarn for it. And uh, I got it all knit up and sent to her. Now, if you watch the Grocery Girls podcast, uh, which... If you're not, I don't know why you're not, but um, she finished, or she wore the Alpine Bloom tea that I finished for her on the last episode. So let me, all right. So you'll see on my Instagram, there's the yarns, Farmer's Daughter's Fibers and Spin Cycle in the Ghost Ranch colorway. Those were the um, the yarns that she sent me. Here they are caked up. Gives you, look at that Ghost Ranch on the bottom. Isn't that, oh, I was just, I just was looking at it and looking at it and looking at it as I was knitting it. It was just something else, I tell you. Um, so, I, there's a picture of the start. You guys are all familiar with the Alpine Bloom Tea, right? I'll, I'll link it below if you haven't seen it, but I'm sure you've seen it because it's been knit tons. Um, so the color work was very, very easy because the yarn did all the work. Um, and then here it is, having a quick block before I got it in the mail to her. Just gorgeous. And then, ah, uh, there she is. And then there she is wearing it. Oops, low battery. Um, so I will be knitting myself one of those. Uh, I enjoyed knitting it. It was easy. The pattern is written beautifully. Um, so if you, you know, if you're interested in some color work, check it out because I think that uh, it's a, it's a great pattern, easy to follow. So, all right, that's number one. Uh, and then Jody gifted me some Frankie, Frankie Gray Fibers, which is uh, her and her daughter's yarn company um, for knitting the sweater for her. And so I will be knitting this beauty, which is the, <clears throat> the Field Sweater by Camilla Vad. Um, let me just bring that up again. Can you see that? It's got this beautiful detail here. But... What got me kind of drawn in is this one. Look at, look at how the detail at the top of the sweater just pops right out by adding a color. So what um, 
I'm knitting mine out of is my main color is going to be this Frankie Gray Fibers DK, um, DK weight, Sand Dollar, which is just a warm, oh, kind of beige taupe. And then for the yoke, I'm going to add in the gingerbread um, mohair. I am wildly excited to knit this. Um, I keep checking Canada Post because it's shipped and I want to see when it gets here um, because I will, even though I want to do the Noctuidae sweater, I will be casting this on immediately as soon as the yarn gets here. So that's the field sweater. Um, DK weight, 3.5 and 4 millimeter needles are used or US 4 and 6. Um, yardages range from uh, 1,050 to 1,800 meters or 1148 to 1969 yards and there are one to no, there's nine sizes available. Um, gauge is 20 stitches and 28 rows by for a 10 by 10 centimeter or four four inch stockinette stitch. Um, it, there are 496, to, soon to be 497 projects on Ravelry. So it has been knit quite a lot. Uh, it is $12.42 um, Canadian for the pattern. So it's not a cheap pattern, but um, I think I'm going to do mine in the short sleeve version. Uh, I can't wait to get this cast on. So that is uh, definitely on my my fall list. So the other thing that has come across my radar is a sweater called uh, Storm Sweater by Petite Knit. Um, here it is here. I think that this would make just a perfect everyday sweater. It's got different patterns, on it. I think that that is, um, I think that's going to be perfect. It is also a DK um, and it is a paid for pattern, $9.32 Canadian. Five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sizes. Um, ranging from 1183 to 1729 meters, four and 3.5 millimeter needles, needles or six and four US. Um, let's see, it's been knit by 128 people. So um, yeah, I, I that's on my radar. Not sure about it yet. The next thing on my radar is the Ella um, cardigan by Isabel Kramer. This is a cardigan that has no buttons, long sleeve cardi. Um, am I going the right way? Yeah. See, it's got the lace panels in the front. Yeah, I think this is a great, you know, I work during the day at a desk. Um, I think this is gonna be a great addition to my wardrobe. Um, easily adjustable as well. You can make it longer if you wanted. These sleeves are nice and long. I like the rolled over cuff. Oh, and there's a nice guy wearing it too. And this lady has it all pinned in the front. I probably wouldn't do that. I would just wear it open. But that one is certainly on my radar. Um, worsted weight, uh, five and 4.5 millimeter needles or eight and seven US. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, nine sizes, uh, 855, <coughs> pardon me, to 1,471 meters. Oh. Paid for a pattern at $9.98 Canadian. Comes in English and Danish, if you speak Danish. So that one is... <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. That one is on my radar too. I think, you know what, we all need a really good house sweater, right? Just something that you can throw on. And then just for fun, um, 
you know, because I walk outside every day, almost every day, um, I'm always looking for a fun hat. And you know, now that winter's coming, I know, bite my tongue, but now that winter's coming. Um, and I love this little hat here, the peace out, peace out ear flap hat. It's a pay for pattern, but I'd be willing to pay for it because it has a peace symbol on it. And uh, look at that. Isn't that fun? It's got the ear flaps and tie it up. It's got the little things on the top, tassels on the top. I like this hat. I think it's fun. I can use up some minis. There it is in a nice black and white, but I, I really like the color, the rainbow color. Um, it is, as I say, a paid for pattern, $5.67 Canadian or $4 US. Um, it's done in worsted weight. Yeah, I think that's a fun pattern. I, I might just make that just because I feel like making it. It's fun. Um, and then another pattern that I like big, big sweaters. You know, I like them to be um, roomy and warm, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I've came across this one a couple of years ago. Um, I actually bought the pattern, but I have not um, taken time to knit it up. This is called My Favorite Sweater, and it's by Loopy Mango. Uh, it is the epitome of the oversized sweater. It's like a sweatshirt. Um, and you can see big, big legs. Oh, there we go. Drop shoulders. Oh, that one looks really super big. <laughs> so really just a, a toasty warm, oh, look at that puppy, look at that. Toasty warm sweater for wearing around the house. Um, paid for pattern, as I say, $13.47 Canadian, nine and a half dollars US. Um, it's made out of worsted weight and it only has, um, Oh, it has one, two, three, four, five sizes. 10, uh, 10 millimeter and 12 millimeter needles. How fast would that knit up using worsted weight? I just might make that on principle because it'll knit fast. Um, your gauge is on US size 17, which is 12 millimeter needles, your gauge is nine and a half stitches and 13 rounds for four inches. Yeah, that's a big sweater. So that's another idea. Um, I like the idea. We talked about the eyelet pop top. And then my daughter, my oldest daughter, uh, who was just here for a visit, which was lovely. She may, uh, messaged me and asked if I would make her this. This is called the Strawberry Cardigan and it's by Le Mute Vacuolian. That was wrong. Uh, it is paid for pattern $9.21, but you know what? My daughter's worth it. So this is certainly not something that I would wear, but apparently, my daughter loves it. Again, oversized with these funky baubles of some sort on the sleeves. Uh, it's meant to be worn long like that, although there is a shorter version, but she wants it. She wants it to come just above the knee. So kind of like a, really, I think that's a coat. I think that's more of a coat. <clears throat> it's done out of super bulky. So again, it will knit up fast on nine and 12 millimeter needles or US 13 and 17, about 1200 yards, 1097 meters in um, yardage. There are four sizes, small through XL and thick, soft and very large cardigan. You will be able to wrap yourself in it like a cozy blanket. So it's meant to be worn um, very large. Only 14 people have, have made this particular pattern. Um, but, uh, I think it is an acquired taste. So, um, that will be on my needles at some point. 
And then the final pattern that I'm considering uh, for my um, house sweater, winter house sweater, is called the Big Sister. Um, I have this pattern already. Uh, Hinterm Stein is the designer. Um, pay for a pattern, $13.20 Canadian, or $8.60, or excuse me, 8.6 euros. Um, big sister for every body. There are, it goes up to, from X, extra small to 4XL in sizes. It's a worsted weight cardigan done on 4.5 millimeter needles. Huh. They suggest like something like Cascade uh, 220, uh, Rowan Felted Tweed Aaron, uh, Knit Picks City Tweed. Um, it's been knit quite a lot, 697. Um, projects but I love the detail of this so it's you know it again look at the detail on right there on the the pockets see that so it's it's a open sweater look at the detail on on the button band there but there's no buttons I love that little cutout but see what I mean it's just a simple comfy wear around the house sweater right I guess you could put buttons on it if you wanted to but this is kind of my idea like that's my idea of a sweater so you know that's on my radar as well for fall knitting um big pockets perfect cardigan to throw on and go out for a quick walk or just around the corner to get the coffee or to the store you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, to knit the perfectly fitting cardigan for you, the pattern includes three options for shaping, a slight A-line, wider hips, and waist shaping. So that's that's good. Um, looks like it's also available in, I want to say German. But anyway, so that's what's on my radar. I don't know if I'm going to, oh no, actually there's a couple more, sorry. All right, I bought this pattern 10 years ago, maybe more, I don't know, maybe more. So this is the Hazel. Um, it's an asymmetrical airy cardigan wrap secure with ties or leave them dangling worked in an easy tuck stitch complete assemble completely assembled on the needle uh, one two three four sizes small to XL um, six millimeter needles five millimeters for the ties stockinette stitch tuck version easy graft and sleeves in the round DK weight they, this, this sample here, um, you see it's got a little bit of open work on the front there, so I'm trying not to crinkle it. Um, this is Maiden Hair by Handmaiden. Uh, so this is a pearl gray pattern, P-E-R-L-G-R-E-Y, pearl gray. Um, I don't know if you can see, I paid 10 bucks for it. Uh, yeah, that's kind of on my radar. I was emptying out a box and I came across this and I went, ooh, I forgot all about that. So I don't know if that's the kind of cardigan that I'm thinking about for here at home, but you know, I've got the yarn. I've got yarn that's suitable for this. So that is on my radar as well. Um, clearly knitting up the Alpine Bloom, Bloom Tea for Jody got me back on a color work kind of kick. Um, I found this pattern that I've had for many, many years. Um, and of course have never knit it, but I do love it. This is a Meg Swans Swanson pattern. It's the North African pullover. Isn't that something else? Yeah, so it's got a rolled neckline. It's got a rolled, uh, looks like a rolled hem on the arms and on the body. And uh, beautiful, beautiful color work. Um, can't really show you 
much because it is a paid for pattern, but that's the sleeve. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, I, I really like this sweater. It is knit in two shades of unspun Icelandic wool worked two ply. Now, I don't have any of that, but I think I've got enough of other stuff that I could, I could make this out of something else. I love this pattern. So that's on my radar too. And then uh, two more that uh, I want to share with you. So this one here is the Goldwing by Jen Steinglass. Again, color work on this on the sleeves here, up here. Love these yoke sweaters. Um, there is one more picture here of. Bear with me while I just kind of fold, fold this a little bit. So there's a close up of the sleeve. I know, I just love it. So that might be, I haven't decided yet if that's on my radar. And then this is another Meg Swanson. Now, this is called the Weeping Sun and Moon. Um, I bought this pattern when I was a relatively new knitter. And it, I just did not have the skill set to knit it at the time. But it intrigues me. But I think that there's a big difference between being intrigued by a pattern and actually knitting it and wearing it. Um, this pattern intrigues me because it's color work. I don't know if it's the color in the pictures that is stopping me. Um, maybe knit up in something different. Uh, I would like it better. Maybe I'll swatch and find out. But this is the Weeping Sun and Moon sweater. So this is the front and this is the back or vice versa, right? And you can see that they did opposite color sleeves. Um, there it is in red. See what I mean? Like I'm not, I'm not sure about this pattern. So it's gonna to go to the bottom of the pile. Um, I'm not sure, I don't know. I guess when in doubt, you know, my grandma always used to say, when in doubt, throw it out. Um, I'm not gonna throw it out, but I don't know that I wanna invest all that time knitting something that is not going, oh my God, I have to knit this, like the sweater that I'm gonna cast on as soon as my yarn gets here from Frankie Gray Fibers. Yeah. Anyway, um, I will link to Frankie Gray in the show notes so you can check her out. So there's that, and I'm sorry, my next door neighbor decided right now to start mowing the lawn. Uh -huh. Okay, things I love. I have told you guys before that my favorite bag maker of all time is my beautiful friend Bridget from Be By Design. Um, I have so many of her bags. Even my purse is a bag made by Bridget. But um, I was checking out Etsy one day and I came across was I checking out Etsy, Etsy or Instagram? I can't remember. I came across a, a bag that I knew I had to have. And it is by a beautiful Canadian maker, uh, Juggling You Woolens. Um, she is uh, from Ontario. And this is the project bag. And of course, what did I just do to my computer? Look at this little project bag with the stones. Oh, look at that. And the stones say, live in love, follow your dreams, believe in magic, give thanks, you are amazing. 
Look at that. Isn't that just the cutest thing? And I knew, I knew I had to have this bag. I don't often buy bags from other bag makers. Um, but I saw this and I went, no, I have to have it. And how absolutely perfect is it that my knitting BFF, Lianne, um, is going to be at the Kitchener Waterloo Knitters Fair, which is coming up in a couple weeks, I think. Maybe it's next weekend, I can never remember. Um, and she, the bag maker, is going to be there. So I purchased the bag. My friend Lianne is gonna pick it up from her so I don't have to pay for shipping because my BFF Lianne is coming here to Nova Scotia next month in October and we are going to the PEI Fiber Festival together. Um, I am teaching at the PEI Fiber Festival and how lucky am I that my BFF is coming with me. So um, I will let you know about or I'll show you this bag once I get it. I'm not going to get it until October but um, I will put a link to her Etsy shop and her Instagram down below so you can go check her out. Another amazing Canadian maker. All right, friends, let's get into the Knitter's Oracle. I think my iPad's going to die. <laughs> I hope it doesn't. Let me see if I can switch the plugs here. I think I would have been. I might get away with it. So let's shuffle them up. Here we go. We'll split the deck and flip the card. What did we get today? The finished object. Oh, I think we've had this one before. I don't remember. The finished object. I love this card. All right, let's see what... 16. Oh, a finished object. Sweet, sweet success. The finished object is the manifestation of your dreams and goals and the culmination of everything you've been working towards. This card comes with a feeling of exhilaration, clarity, hope, promise, optimism, even fame and recognition. If you see this card, it is likely guiding you in the direction of progress and success. The finished object. <laughs> well, let me tell you, I did feel exhilaration from finishing that Alpine tea for Jody. I loved that knit. The yarn was beautiful. It was yarn that I had never knit with before. It was a pattern I'd never knit before. And I was doing it for somebody who I knew appreciates fine work. So you know, how much more knit worthy could you be knitting for than somebody who has a knitting podcast, right? So, um, yeah. If you see this card, it's likely guiding you in the direction of progress and success. So maybe this is my impetus to get to work again on my Noctua sweater and to keep at it and to get through it. Hmm. What do you think? What comes up for you when you think about finished objects? Let me know. All right, friends. <clears throat> That's all for today, episode 15. Thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me. I hope to see you on the 13th at Virtual Knit Night. Remember, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, please do so. Once a month is the... Um, the only time that I'll send you uh, send you an email. And if you don't have the newsletter but want to come to Virtual Knit Night, send me an email. The email address is down below. Jump on over to Instagram and follow me there. I would love to see your projects too. So uh, follow you and I'll fo follow me and I'll follow you. Um, that's it for today. I hope that you are enjoying your long weekend. I hope that you are getting in some knitting time. Take good care, do something kind for yourself today, 
and we'll talk soon. Bye for now.